This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Given the number of pretty bad primetime games we've had so far this year, the fact that we get both the Bengals and the Ravens and the Chiefs and the Eagles in primetime for week number 11 is a true blessing. We're going to talk about both those games, talk about other key games across week 11 from a betting perspective, and let you know what Ed Feng's numbers say about week 11 relative to the lines at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of Digital. Digital media for FanDuel Research, joined here as I am every Thursday by Dr. Ed Feng. You can find his work at thepowerrank.com. Check him out on Twitter at the Power Rank Ed. Pretty spicy island games coming up this weekend. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I mean, really looking forward to this Thursday night game, especially after whatever was it last week? It was a snoozer. Yeah. I mean, the, the Sunday night game was awful. Yeah. So thank you, NFL, for not flexing that one out. <laughs> Jets and Raiders. Uh, so. conspiracy theory on that. Um, yeah, if you will, they had a pre recorded segment with the actor from Heidi, and it was like that's the Heidi game back in the day when they switched off of Jets yeah, Raiders yeah, to yeah. show Heidi. I think so. NBC like contacted the actor who played Heidi and had her record like this intro, and I was like, is that why this game didn't get flex? So they could actually use this clearly pre recorded intro thing because I was like, there's no reason for them to to not swap off that game and yet they chose to leave it and i was like i de- i don't think that was the reason but like it it did creep into my mind at least is what i would say but zach wilson i mean anytime you can show zach wilson versus aiden o'connell in primetime ed you know you got to do but, it right but zach wilson i mean zach wilson is is, is a new standard for low did the I mean, Jets consider about- hiring the Heidi actor as a quarterback instead? Because that's a workaround. They could have just done that as opposed to playing the, the canned intro. True. I think they, they should consider could have Carson Wentz to, to play quarterback. That might have worked a little bit better. They've got touchdown Trevor Simeon, Ed. What could they possibly need Carson Wentz for? Touchdown Trevor or Carson Wentz? They, Give me they play touchdown Trevor. Trevor. They, they should. It's an idea. They should. I agree. Free my guy, uh, unleash the beast once again, get him back in the saddle for the Jets. Uh, luckily, I guess I thought I was gonna say we're not talking Jets today, but we are. Uh, the Jets Bills game is in, uh, is a game we're discussing later on in large part because it's a must win game for the Bills. And Ed, I'm way off from market for that game, so I'm I selfishly have it in there so I can ask you about your thoughts in that game. We'll get that one later on. We're talking about briefly Bengals, Ravens. We will talk about Chiefs and Eagles as well. So the actual good games are in there too. We will talk uh, some Jets Bills to get the Bills discussion out of the way. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. We have primetime Tom for the Thursday night game already posted. Tom broke down props for Bengals versus Ravens. That's right here in the Covering the Spread podcast feed. You can also find that on FanDuel TV Plus. To get FanDuel TV Plus, go to FanDuel.com slash watch. You can also find uh, that game uh, or find these shows on the FanDuel YouTube page as well. FanDuel.com or YouTube.com slash FanDuel to get to all of those. Uh, Tomorrow, JJ Zacharyson is with us to break down NFL Week 11 player props. Our college football show with Ed is up as well in the same podcast feed score early this nfl season with fanduel america's number one sports book right now new customers get 150 dollars in bonus bets with any winning five dollar money line bet that's 150 bucks if your team wins if you've been thinking about joining fanduel there is no better time to get in on the action the app is so easy to use there is a wide range of betting options including spreads player props totals and more so visit FanDuel and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in President select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. First online real money wager. Only $5 pregame money line wager required. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. 
See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona. 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana. 1-800-522-4700. Visit ksgamblinghills.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland. 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia. 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-8HOPE-NY or text hope and y in New York. Now, Ed, we typically don't discuss the Thursday game here on the show because we record Thursday afternoon, but kind of can't ignore this game. So Bengals Ravens, anything you like for this game on Thursday night football? I like watching a good game on Thursday (laughs) night. That's certainly what I like. No, I mean, this is look, this is going to be an awesome game. Uh, You have to. I mean, look, Baltimore, you know, has probably been the best team in the NFL this year. They certainly have been. Well, I guess they did lose last week. <laughs> it was interesting. It was like a game which you thought they were going to run away with it. Uh-huh. And uh yeah, didn't didn't quite happen. And then Cincinnati uh certainly playing better. I actually drove by uh the stadium while they were playing uh Houston last week, which was uh, pretty interesting on my way back from Kentucky from uh from a soccer tournament. Yeah, look, I mean, uh I think this is going to be a great game. Um, I actually do have a bet that I want to give out here. Um, I actually like Lamar Jackson under a half interception here. Lamar Jackson is one of the NFL's best at not putting the ball in dangerous positions. And uh, my research has shown that that is how you, uh, that's how you predict future interceptions. Hey, that's the same price. Um, I have it at about, Oh, and the other thing about Lamar Jackson is that he doesn't really throw a ton of passes. The market has him for about 29, eh, somewhere between 27 and a half and 29 and a half. Even if you assume the high end, I have a 56% chance that he does not throw a pick. So uh, I like I like the no or under under a half interception. When does FanDuel usually post these? I'm, I'm often like, do they post these like very, very late? Probably. Um, I haven't checked uh, because I don't tend to do a ton of props personally. Um, so I don't actually know when they get posted, um, but it tends to be later than a lot of places for yeah. the other markets, at least. I mean, I'm usually looking at Sunday slate on Friday and I never right. see any on FanDuel. Right. Uh, but it's nice that it's up right now. Yeah. Uh, under a half pick is minus 114 for Lamar Jackson right now. And you know, Lamar is playing great. Uh, I think that makes a lot of sense. I actually do kind of like the Bengals money line here. Now this has been moving the other way um, because it was like, as we've been recording, they were plus uh, 152 about 10 minutes ago. They're now plus 164. So there's been some action coming in on the Ravens side. I also, I think you justify taking the plus three and a half because I think it'll be a pretty tight game. There's no T Higgins uh, for the Bengals, but there's also no Ronnie Stanley for the Ravens and there's no Marlon Humphrey likely for the Ravens as well. So injuries on both sides. So personally, I'm okay. Um, Viewing this game is pretty evenly matched. So I do like Cincinnati plus three and a half. Uh, The money line is plus 164. I think both those do make a lot of sense. And again, this should be pretty tightly contested. I think that, Last week kind of made us forget how high everyone was and the market was in the Bengals just a week ago. And it's not like they played bad against Texans. Like Texans just played really well in that game. Bengals moved the football still on offense. So honestly, like I think it's a pretty tight game. So I'll take the points here or take the money line on the Bengals side. But I do like the Lamar interception number as well. Let's talk about the Sunday games right now. A couple of interesting ones because they have playoff implications, even though they may not be the the most thrilling games. Let's start things off here by talking about the Steelers and the Browns. We got Dorian Thompson Robinson starting this game for the Browns, and they're now back out to being favored by a point and a half. Uh, That had been the Steelers by a point and a half earlier on on Wednesday. Total is now 32 and a half. And Ed, 
I did take the over in this game. Not going to lie. Uh, but it's two, six and three teams. One of these teams is probably going to the playoffs. So how do you see this one playing out with the Sean Watson shelved for the Browns? I feel like there's a wide variety of outcomes that could happen in this game. I think it's pretty interesting that they're going to start DTR. PJ Walker, um, you know, wasn't good, but you certainly don't have the downside of throwing a rookie out there. Uh, we've seen some rookies go out there. Some have done pretty well. Some have done kind of awful. Um, yeah, I use my market model um, when with without Deshaun in there. And, you know, I have Cleveland by uh, about one here, so not showing much value. Uh, yeah, could be a pretty ugly game. But, you know, defense is fun. Two great defenses. Yep. <laughs> I'm hoping there's not a ton of defense, personally, because, like I said, I did, I did take the over. Like, I had yeah. tweeted out um, how low my model had this total when – it was first announced that Sean was out. I have it thir- at 34.6. And so I was like, oh, it's the lowest total I've had in my model. Dating, I've been running the model since week 13 or 15 of last year. So it's not a huge sample, but like it is the lowest total I've ever had. But then it was at 36 and a half at that time and it moved down four points. So it crossed the point where I was like, oh, I kind of like the under it all of a sudden. Actually, I like the over now. So I did take the over at that uh, 32 and a half. Um, I think I got minus 110. It's minus 120 at FanDuel Sportsbook, but I feel like like it's just kind of not accounting for how much variance you can get in these games with very good defense. Like defense can generate points on their own. They can generate short fields to the offense as well. So personally, I think that 32 and a half is a bit of an overreaction. Like DTR in that first game against the Ravens, he was awful, but like he also found out he was starting Sunday morning because Deshaun Watson thought that, or they thought Deshaun Watson was going to play And all of a sudden it's like, no, not going to happen. And they had talked about potentially, there was some beat writer talk about potentially starting Dorian Thompson Robinson the week before Deshaun came back from that injury. And they're like, okay, PJ Walker's kind of struggling. It might go DTR. It's a volatile situation, but I think the volatility is good when this total is so low. So honestly, Ed, like, I kind of like the volatility here. It might wind up where they just kind of play conservatively, play towards the under because AFC North. AFC North games have just been awful for my model, but like I still feel like the over here is enticing given how low this number is. One of the first few years that we did this podcast, I remember UCLA was going to Cincinnati and I had UCLA like plus five. And uh, with the idea that, you know, power five, uh, talent was going to overwhelm Cincinnati and that turned out to be a terrible bet. And DTR was the the quarterback. It was probably before he hit his stride out there at UCLA. Maybe I'm still mad at him about that, (laughs) but, uh, Hey, props to the kid that, that he, he's, uh, he, he is, uh, he's going to start and he's going to start his second NFL game on Sunday. Yeah, uh, he played really well in his final year at UCLA. Um, <clears throat> played well in the preseason, did not play well in his first start against the Ravens, but we'll see if he can bounce back here against the Steelers. Let's talk now about the Jets at the Bills. This is one of three games on during the afternoon slate, so enjoy that. Uh, the spread is the Bills minus seven with a total at 40 right now. And Ed, it's effectively a must-win game for the Bills, given how tough their remaining schedule is. And I'm way off market on this game. I show a lot of value on the bills. So I want to figure out why the spread is not larger. So I want to get a sanity check from you. What's your read on the bills and what's your read on them in this game specifically? I think the question is whether this is a good buy low spot for the bills. When I run a number for this, I mean, I've thrown out, I throw out the the preseason component for the jets every single week. The, (laughs) I use my market numbers. I use data based on the current season. And that is pretty consistently said the Jets are between two or three points worse than NFL average. I think that's about right. Uh, we've seen a big uh, increase in their defensive numbers over the last couple of weeks. The offense simply sucks. Zach Wilson is is just, just not a good quarterback. And then the Bills, you know, like, I mean, you know, the parts of the Bills are doing really well. Um, the offenses actually look pretty good in my numbers. I think it's kind of the turnovers that that got Dorsey fired, which is unfortunate. But right now, the Bills are actually dead last when I look at uh, passing success rate on defense. That is bad. 
it's not uh i don't think the story i don't i certainly don't think they're the worst pass defense in the nfl and you can kind of tell by some of the pff uh grades that they have as a defense they're actually ninth in coverage grade um even without Tredavious White, they, they've actually got some pretty good players back there. Rasul Douglas has, has stepped in. They all have some pretty good grades. Their 12th in pass rush is uh, – so, so you know, I mean, w- when you grade them on a play-by-play basis, they seem a lot better. They seem, you know, that we can expect here on out that they'll be about NFL average. I think that's a decent expectation. It's pretty interesting to look at Von Miller. He's played, uh, I think, six games. But I wrote down he's got six pressures and 88 pass rush snaps. That's bad. Mm-hmm. I don't know whether he's going to do better, um, but clearly he has the talent to do better. He he has been a lot better than that. So that's an interesting thing to watch here as well. Overall, my numbers have Buffalo by eight. I haven't bet this yet. I would certainly lean towards the Bills. You know, I have I have a ticket for the Bills to win the division. Uh, I have a ticket on Jets under nine and a half wins, which is not as sound as i would like it to be <laughs> at this point i mean honestly that first game is still yeah you know i mean if you remember like you know the, the jets won on a punt return in overtime i had the jets money happened? line i remember it very well yes yeah so um yeah i don't know i mean it, it's i i definitely lean towards the bills here I, i'll probably i might bet it later but um but that's certainly my lean yeah i agree with the defensive stuff like they they're they're rough there because of all the injuries they've had stuff like that like i think that's legitimate i agree with you though on the offense as well where they've had some turnover luck and we know that turnovers are kind of fluke not entirely fluky like josh allen does he does some weird stuff now i think i read from pff or somewhere that he has his lowest turnover worthy play rate of his career um he's just so uh you might have to run some like bad ball numbers on that but like I don't know. I don't think they're as bad as they've as the results say they've been recently. I think that this is an offense I can I feel okay betting on. Um like I don't really care that Dorsey got fired because like he did some weird stuff anyway, and I like Joe Brady, but like I don't think he deserved to be fired, but it doesn't like bother me that he was. So right. I guess for me personally, it's just I think this offense is a lot better than what this number is saying. And even in a good matchup, I don't think the Jets can keep pace, which is why I was very okay laying the six and a half at the time. And even at seven, I do still think the Bills are undervalued there. Yeah, in terms of the bad ball stuff, Josh Allen has traditionally been pretty good since the beginning of the 2021 season. He has an 11% bad ball rate, which is lower than the 11.6 or 7.11.6 NFL average. He's actually been particularly good this season, 9.7% bad ball rate. His interception rate has been over three, which is not good. The NFL average is 2.3. I had him under a half interception against Cincinnati, and that was rough. I mean, he I was checking to blo- see if they were up for, for Sunday for that exact reason. Not up yet, but they, uh, yeah, that one was a rough game because, like, um, like he threw a pick right to the Cincinnati guy which yeah. is obviously a mistake, Yeah, but uh, he only had two bad balls. And, you know, the defense only got uh, their hand on two bad balls, which, you know, more often than not, you're going to get, um, you know, zero ter- zero interceptions and, and win that bet. I think that was also the game. Joe Burrow had like six bad balls and no picks. <laughs> and I had to over on that. That was, uh, yeah, I was not happy that week with how yeah. the interception props went. I had the bills. I had the bills in that game too. So I had the bills on Monday too. And like, it felt like their pass rush was constantly getting there, but then Russ would do like vintage Russ stuff. And I was like losing my mind. Like, where did this come from? He's like flipping balls to running backs. on like third and 10 to pick up first downs. It's just like right. crazy Russ. We have not seen. I'm like, of course this happens yep. when I'm betting the bills. I had them in like a teaser the too. Like it was, it was rough, brutal stuff. Yeah. Yep. Oh, well, well, hopefully they don't do it again because I I'm just annoyed at them at this point. But I I bet them anyway, but I'm annoyed at them for sure. Let's finish things up here by talking about the the hammer on Monday night. That is the Eagles at the Chiefs, a Super Bowl rematch for right now. Chiefs are two and a half point favorites in the total in this game. Forty five and a half. Some potential weather here looks more so rain than wind. And I care more about wind personally. So weather doesn't bother me too much. But Ed, with this game. Neither offense has really lit things up this year, despite having a pretty impressive record. So 
What do your numbers say about the Eagles at the Chiefs on Monday night? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, this is uh this is kind of an interesting game just because I, I just don't think these teams are the two teams that met in the Super Bowl last year. As you said, Kansas City's offense is down. They're ninth in my adjusted passing success rate. I'm not exactly uh, down on the unit. You know, they still have Travis Kelsey. Rookie Rashi Rice uh, has had 2.28 yards per out run, which is very good for any NFL wide receiver in particular. A rookie wide receivers average about 1.5 yards per route run. Kansas City's look great based on defense. Uh, the past defense ranks second in my adjusted numbers. But, you know, a lot of regression is looming for this unit. It's not a team that you would say, hey, I expect this to be one of the elite NFL defenses. You can kind of see this uh, in the PFF numbers. They're 18th in, in coverage grade. It's kind of the opposite of what we talked about for Buffalo, right? Buffalo's numbers are terrible. We expect them to regress to average. Um, with the Chiefs, the numbers are great, and we expect them to regress towards average as well. You know, Philly's got an 8-1 and one record. And yeah, we talked about this with Louisville yesterday, right? Like they lost to the team that they absolutely should have beat in the Jets and then are 5-0 and in all other one-score games, right? And close wins over Dallas last week and Washington twice. You really got to talk about how the defense has been a ton worse. Um, they are uh, pretty much NFL average when I look at adjusted passing success rate. And, you know, I mean, Josh Job has had a really hard time filling in for Avante Maddox. His, his PF grade is awful. Every time I turn on the Eagles, it looks like he's getting burnt. Um, so on the offense, Jalen Hurts has actually been pretty good in the last two games. Uh, I'm having uh, I'm tracking a 50 percent success rate in both those games. But also like seven, uh, you know, seven yards per pass attempt against Dallas, almost eight yards per pass attempt against Washington, much better than the NFL averages. I personally don't trust Jalen Hurts as a passer. Uh, I've seen him too inaccurate. He has never had, a, even with those stud wide receivers, he's never really had uh, great numbers when you look at passing success rate. Obviously brings a lot with his legs and, and other things, but like, I personally think these last two games are a bit of a fluke. Overall, I have Kansas City by almost five uh, points at home. I'm certainly seeing value in the minus two and a half. What's interesting, based on the data this season, I would make Kansas City five points better on a neutral site. Like that's kind of how bad Philly's defense has played. I think there's a lot of value in Kansas City minus two. I think this is going to get to at least three. Oh, and did we mention that that Hurts uh, was is still listed as questionable because he got banged in his knee last week? He's going to play, but, yeah. you know, maybe not 100%. So I think this gets to at least three, and uh, I think there's a lot of value on Casey. It's hit three briefly a couple times, but then it's come back. And the money line has kind of bounced around a bit, too. Uh, currently, Kansas City money line is minus 148. I believe that I show value on that. Uh, yeah, I've got them at... Well, not a ton. I've got them at 64.2% to win, and their implied odds are uh, right around 60%. So it's actually a decent amount of value on the Chiefs' money line here. I don't tend to trust my model with the Eagles because of the stuff you mentioned. Um, it does weight passing efficiency a lot, and they get dinged in that every single time. I have a different model that kind of views things more holistically, and that one has the Chiefs by 27 So I tend to trust that model more so when it comes to Eagles games because I worry that it'll it'll worry too much about their passing efficiency when they've got like that cheat code on third and fourth and short, which is weird because like you would think it would lead to their late down success rate being astronomical. And it is first in the league, but it's not like an outlier in terms of where it is compared to other teams. So I think they're the hardest team to diagnose. I wish I could just ignore every Eagles game every single week because I feel like it just leads down really dumb roads for me. I did take the chiefs money line. Um, just because that other model is it overall tests better. Like I know that like it's mean squared error is better than my other model, but I always worry about it. The Eagles specifically because of the, uh, because of how good they are running the football because of an underwhelming passing efficiency. So I did take the chiefs. I don't feel like perfect about it, but I think that there's a reason why the numbers are where they are. I guess is the way that I'd phrase that personally. Right. 
Yeah. So it's a fun game. Uh, should be a decent one to cap things off on Monday night. But hey, you know, it's not not if you don't want to bet it, you want to sit back and enjoy the game like Ed discussed with the Thursday night game fully within your rights because it should be a good way to close out the week as well. That is all that we have here for today on the NFL Week 11 side of things, but we do have some props coming up tomorrow with the JJ Zach Racing to get that show. Make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. We will have a show coming up on Monday as well, breaking down Eagles and Chiefs with Ryan Williams to break down that game, talk some player props for that one as well. Ed, what is going on for you this week at the Power Rank? Uh, I'm still writing my uh, check out my free sports betting email n- newsletter. Uh, I publish five nuggets Saturday. And so if you're looking for any action, if you're looking for some action on any given weekend, that's the free service for you. So check that out at thepowerrank.com. And Ed also mentioned yesterday that he has a show up on the football analytics show talking about impact of rest, impact of home field would highly recommend that to just kind of get a refresher on how much those things matter in our current day and age. You can find Ed on Twitter at the power rank. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. I am on threads at Jim You can find FanDuel research on Twitter at FanDuel research. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Enjoy Bengals versus Ravens for tonight. And we'll talk to you once again tomorrow for some player props in week 11. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.